world or someone, some country that can't speak my language, it's good to call my name, but I meet a lot of foreigners, people that don't, that are not from here but don't have a birth certificate, and they desire to not go through all the, uh, the all the tra traditional the, the names. They just say, call me Pete. Call me Sue. It's, it's too hard to say. So I get it. But it is appropriate that he is talking to the world. He is now Paul. And the Gentiles, just like I told you earlier, they praise God heavily at the end of 13 because they can now receive the word of the Lord. It's appropriate. I thank God that I can call him Paul because Paul is for me. You see, if he was just Saul, uh, we would still be unworthy Gentiles. But there's a Paul that reaches out to me. Amen. Now, see, Esther was Hadassah. Hadassah could be the blessing to her people. But Esther was the queen in the king's house. Amen. But I thank God that there's something appropriate and fitting for me. God will use other people to bless you the way that they are supposed to bless you. And if it means altering and making them fitting for you, God has the blessing for you with your name on it. I'm glad I can call him Paul and he didn't get stuck at being Saul and persecuting Christians and stuck being a Pharisee and just a tent maker. Tell your neighbor, I'm more than my occupation. You can call me Saul and Paul. You can call me Jimmy, Pooh Bear, and James. But it takes all of those names, hallelujah, for God to get the glory out of my life. You don't stop being the person of occupation and the person of uh, leisure just to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. But God uses you just how you are. He'll clean you up. But you don't use your talents. and You don't use your, lose your desires if your ways are pleasing. He'll give you the desires of your heart. I, I thank God that he uses me in all of and everything he made uh, about me. I thank God that he knows who I am. And it doesn't matter my name, but if, if I know Jesus' name, hallelujah, that's all that matters. And we can call him Saul, Paul, the Pharisee, the tent maker, but we know he worked for Jesus. Do you work for Jesus this morning? When I see you, I should know who you are. I should know who you work for. I should know who you minister to. And that should be everybody. Paul and Barnabas, hallelujah. Luke. Hallelujah. Goes on to call him Paul. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost, the beginning of this passage, made some separations in Antioch, didn't it? The Holy Ghost made some separations. It said, the Holy Ghost said, and now, I don't know about you, but I, I've been to enough Bible classes and enough, uh, I've been to enough uh, Sunday schools where I know and the Holy Ghost talking is Jesus talking. Amen? In Acts, Jesus talked to him. In Acts, the Holy Ghost talked to him. Well, what's the Holy Ghost name? What is the Holy Ghost identity? It is Jesus. So the Holy Ghost made some declarations and gave some orders. The Holy Ghost said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, you got to minister to the Lord. When you fast and dedicate your life to the Lord, when you pray, we're going to go back into a fast. Hallelujah. Maybe once or every two weeks or some sort. But we're going to go back into a praying and a fasting. It's ministering to the Lord. When you minister unto the Lord, God will send you ministering angels like he sent Jesus. But they minister. Unto, this is serious business. You get orders from the Holy Spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit and when you minister to the Lord by fasting, then the Holy Ghost said, see, when they was in the operation of trusting and afflicting their flesh so that they could hear from God clearly. When they was in the middle of talking to God, hallelujah, and making it a serious thing, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost said, gave them some words. He said, separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them. They sent them away 
And when the Holy Ghost talks, you listen. Do you remember the old commercial? When E.F. Hatton talks, people listen. I, I guess it's a business that went under or was sold out and bought by another company. But people listen. Well, when the Holy Ghost talks, I, I submit to you that we need to listen. But we can't listen if we are not fasting or praying or we're not obedient to Jesus. We got to listen. We got to know what the Spirit has to say. Amen. He that had an ear to hear like Isaiah in Revelation, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. Do you know what the Spirit is saying to you? Amen. I think Saul, Paul, did not have a lot of time. Barnabas did not have a lot of time to sit around in their seat and uh, kind of get confused and, and to sit around and say, you know what? I don't know what my purpose is. I don't have no direction. Mm, twiddle their thumbs and get on Facebook. And uh, Well, since I don't know my purpose, let me buy some time. And I think it's true what they say, the devil's, uh, an idol mine is the devil's playground. Well, even if the devil's not playing on that idol mine, if you don't need an idol mine for yourself, amen, because you have some own lust. I have some own lust and some disobedient ways. So we don't need to sit around, what is my purpose? What does God want me to do? I don't know. Let me just go call Susie on the phone and talk about the weather. I don't know, let me just, uh, uh, but Paul and Barnabas and they were separated by the Holy Ghost. I didn't plan to do this. So when the Holy Ghost, Jesus got, gave them orders, they got up, they laid hands on them with oil. And they anointed, they got up, and they went on about their business to see what God wanted them to do. And they got orders. They went on about the business of the Holy Ghost. And they sent them away. Uh, I don't think all the people knew exactly then that was there what Paul and Barnabas was supposed to do. But they knew they was not supposed to be there. They knew God had a mission for them. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter whether you leave the city or you stay in the city. God has a mission for you. If you haven't received your orders from the Holy Spirit all year long, we need to pray and fast and say, Lord, what should I do, Lord? What do I do? Who do I bless? You've given me some talents. And you've given me the Holy Ghost. I need more Holy Ghost. I need more direction from the Lord. We need more instruction from the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us exactly what to do to pray without ceasing and to bless the Lord at all times and lift up holy hands and, and to uh, learn he that have an ear and, and, that, and that we are to arm ourselves likewise with the same mind. That means we're supposed to study and pray, hallelujah. But the Spirit of God is ready to talk to you if we would just open up and give up our own will. Sometimes we get very, very dedicated in what we want. And we all, we talk about the strongholds of the spirit. We're not honest. We all have a stronghold over our life because we want to control it and take it. We got the steering wheel, don't we? We got the steering wheel. Anybody had the steering wheel in their life before? And you think, especially if you're out of the will of God, you think it is your proclivity you think it is your choice to turn the wheel to the right. I can do what I want to do. I know what's best for me. I know what feels good. But has it ever occurred to you that Jesus should take this wheel? It's not just a meeting. Jesus, take the wheel because you know where you want me to go. The Holy Ghost sent them orders. And we should pray for orders of the Holy Ghost. We should pray for the, the, the Lord to tell us what to do and who to minister to. Hallelujah. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, they departed under Seleucia. And from thence they got to sail. They got to get on the boat. They got to go to Cyprus. Amen. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. 
and they had also John to their minister. Hallelujah. Later on down the line, they went to another city, and they preached to the Jews and Gentiles, and then the Gentiles showed up, and the Gentiles said, I think we get to show up every Sabbath now. And they start showing up, so the Jews start getting mad, and they start persecuting Paul and Barnabas. But right here, they preached this word, and there was a man called Sergius Paulus. He was the deputy of the country. He was a prudent man. Prudent means practical. And he called for Paul and Barnabas. The Bible says he desired to hear them. A lot of scholars think that he just wanted to hear them out. He didn't really desire to really hear them as far as his being anxious or wanting to understand what they were saying. I think it's a little bit of both. He, the Bible said he desired to heal, hear them. But there was another man called Elimus, also called, he had a nickname too. He, they called him Bar Jesus and Elimus. He was a sorcerer. Now, I told you last week that should make you very scared for Elimus and Bar Jesus, which is the same. That should make you very frightened for him. Because we told you last week that Herod, when they lifted up Herod and they arrayed him in apparel and they exalted him and they called him a god. The Holy Spirit struck him down. Hallelujah. But Bar Jesus was a sorcerer. Now I'm scared. I'm scared. This is serious business. Amen. There was a, another woman, and there, there was a woman in Acts 16, I believe, and she was hired to do divination and, and to do all type of sorcery. And, and they prayed, hallelujah, that the spirit of the devil come out of her. And then she couldn't make them any more money. Bar Jesus was a sorcerer. And uh, in verse 8, Elimus, which was Bar Jesus the sorcerer, he withstood Paul and Barnabas. He, they're going on the orders of the Holy Spirit and the devil's in their way. Hallelujah. Have you ever knew that God told you to do something, but every time you turn around, the door is shut and you can't get past the obstacle and you feel the devil is fighting against you. I'm going to tell you what to do. Hey, man, we already told you, keep praying, keep fasting, keep trusting that the Holy Ghost gave your orders. Can't nothing stop the plan of Jesus. Can't nothing stop the journey that the Holy Ghost put you on. But here come the devil. He did, uh, the devil, Elimus, and he withstood them. He seek to turn away the deputy from the faith is what the Bible says. So, so I really think that, uh, I really, really, really think that Sergius Paulus was really sincere. He wanted to hear what was going on. Because the Bible says he seeked to turn away the deputy from the faith. Amen. Your faith in God is wanting to hear what the man, the woman of God, what the spirit of God wants to say. If you got faith in God, you should, you should be running to the church. If you got faith in God, you should be running to open your Bible. If you got faith in God, hallelujah, the Bible says write the vision, make it plain. The Bible says when you put it on tables, they'll run when they see it. If you got faith in the Lord, you're not running from him, but you're running to him, hallelujah. But here comes the devil in your way to stop you, but not today, devil. I got a pause. I got a soul in me that's ready, hallelujah, to move the obstacles with the spirit and the power of Jesus. Do you believe that he can move mountains? Do you believe that the devil is just a little old imp and has no power? 
from doing the will of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Paul, who was all, Saul, who was also called Paul, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. We got to be full of the Holy Ghost. Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost, and, and he did wonderful things. They could not withstand him. Full of the Holy Ghost. Philip, I'm talking about just deacons right now. Full of the Holy Ghost. Do you believe sitting there in your chair, you may not ever preach a sermon, you might preach a sermon. Do you believe that you can be full of the Holy Ghost? Full of the Holy Ghost. So he, he, he was full of the Holy Ghost. Look what happened, y'all. When obstacles come in your way, be full of what God has given you. His most precious gift is eternal life and it's through the Holy Ghost. Either way you put it, amen. And he was full of the Spirit in him. With the Holy Ghost, he set his eyes on him. Hallelujah. Now, it said he was full of the Holy Ghost. But he set his eyes on him. That means the Holy Ghost was looking at that sorcerer and made business. Oh, I'm so scared. Tell your neighbor, I'm so scared for what might happen to that man. Full of the Holy Ghost, he set his eyes on him. And he said, oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right, right ways of the Lord? You're just not going to stop, poor Jesus. You, you, you must be crazy. Are you just going to continue to persecute and to talk and pervert what God has ordained? You must be out of your mind. And there's some people, I've been in this church, I'm 48 years old, 49 almost, been in this church for at least 47 years. Uh, I was in Omaha for six months, and, and now I'm here. But I've been around long enough, long enough to see the devil try to pervert, hallelujah, the right ways of the Lord, even in the church. Even in the church, the devil will come to block the blessings of God. And what am I saying? The devil is made and ordained to block the blessings that God has for you. Yes, he is. So he'll run a trick on you. He'll give you a bar, Jesus, that sounds good. And he knew your future. And he told your fortune. And he, he did divination. And he burned the incense. And he explained to you all of the, the, the palm reading and the superstitious way. Uh, he'll send you uh, to Linus, uh, someone that will get you off track. The devil is busy. But this is a spiritual thing. Hallelujah. He said, you're just not going to stop, devil. You're just not going to get off of your, of course he's not. He's designed, and he's been doing it for a long time, and he's not going to stop, and he's not going to let you and I go easily. But when we make a decision, and we decide, hallelujah, to walk with Jesus, hallelujah, he, he don't have no more power out of us. He can tug at us if, if he wants. But who shall separate us from the love of God? Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah, has me in his grip. He said, you that will not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. Why am I stopping right there? We need to get it into our brains. I didn't write it down and make it a point to make that one of the main topics. But the devil will not cease to try to pervert the right ways of the Lord. He's doing it in the news, isn't he? And the devil's doing it at the schools. He's trying to pervert what is right. So our way, our yeas ain't yay no more, and our nays ain't nays. But it's something in the middle. It's subject to how we think at that time and, and what geographical state that we're in right now. In Indiana, the uh, right is right. And in Florida, the right is a different right. Am I right about it? And in your home, the devil will pervert your right ways. You know prayer and fasting gets you through the spiritual tough times. And that anointed or I poured some woman this morning again. You know that makes the difference in your life. You know this relationship that he wants you to have is going to make you an overcomer. But you choose to listen to the devil. I'm just here to remind you this morning, he's not going to stop. But Jesus is stronger every day of 
of your life. That's why the song says, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. That means the devil is more sour, and you can recognize him when he moves subtly. He said, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways? He tried to give him a chance, amen. He tried to say, get out of my way, or the God is going to block you because you can't stand in the Holy Spirit's orders in their way. So verse 11 says this. It says, now behold, Paul had enough. Tell somebody, Paul had enough. As man and woman of God, you should have enough. You should have enough. And it, I had enough of the devil getting me off track. He, he, he tries to get you off track and you let him. So he really just led you. But you the one got off track. I've had enough of the devil wreaking havoc. And I'm supposed to be a child. And I, I want to get even better today than I was yesterday. I was anointed last week. What happened this week? I want the anointing to continue to destroy the yoke. So devil, now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee. We have to walk in this every day of our life. Devil, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. Grab your, stand up to your feet and grab the devil and say the hand of the Lord is upon thee. Devil, I got the power of Jesus right now. The hand of the Lord will stop you in your tracks. I guarantee you as soon as he said that, he stopped was set upon him and the Holy Ghost had him on a laser beam and he couldn't move and he said behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee thou shalt be blind not seeing the sun for a season and immediately there fell on him a mist a darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand he got in God's way one too many times. So blindness was put on him. And when he was blind, I guarantee you, being a sorcerer and perverting the righteous ways of the Lord was the last thing on his mind. He just wanted some direction. And he had direction before. Paul and Barnabas came, Elder Hall. Paul and Barnabas came to give direction. You had the light, but you choose to let the devil try to pervert the word of God. So blindness had to be put on him for a whole season. Hallelujah. God is mighty. God is mighty. God is mighty. Now that we say, we read those scriptures and we kind of get, we're softer. I'm just going to uh, uh, I'm just gonna let you know if you didn't know, we're a softer nation. We're a softer humankind. We're softer. We're softer. Now when we read scriptures like that, we say, oh no. Amen. Oh no, blindness put on them. Amen. But you should have gave that up when you was little. But I'm here to tell you we have to be powerful in the name of the Lord. God is omnipotent. He's all powerful. Hallelujah. I'm not always hard, but when it comes to Jesus, Paul and Barnabas spoke with boldness. And they spoke with uh, uh, with exactness. And they, they spoke with what they call buoyancy. And they put hands and said, your time's up. And he said, uh, thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. A season to me means at least three months. <laughs> I'm not sure what it meant then, but it looked like at least three months. And immediately when the prophet and when you got orders from the Holy Spirit, God makes things happen suddenly for you. Amen. You struggle with something on your job. You're struggling something within your house. Amen. Start praying and fasting. Start trusting in the Lord. And then immediately I dare you to speak to God. And speak, look in the eye, spiritually or physically, exactly what is keeping you bound. And say, get out of my way, devil. The Holy Spirit got you in the beams right now. Get out of my way. I have to put a stop to this. He said, the Lord, the hand of the Lord is upon you. The hand of the Lord is a dangerous thing to be in the hands of an angry God. Immediately, there was a mist, a darkness. And he went about seeking 
saying something.